Good morning. Um, Keith Hayes reporting from Lewis in East Sussex. And I put up a, a promo this morning, which I can't show on here because uh, of all the various systems that people have. Uh, but I will. I'll get it converted. Uh, and what I'm saying is, if you want to get pissed off, uh, uh, listen to me first thing in the morning. And I don't mean now. I'm six o'clock or 6.30 or whenever I wake up and I take a first look at the headlines, I can piss you off. And yesterday, I actually, or the day before, I made a comment about uh, uh, thinking that the BBC News was better on the weekend than on the, uh, the, the than in the weekday. <laughs> oh, boy. I, I just pissed about everybody off. And there was a marvellous, marvellous debate. And it was a proper debate. And it was a thoughtful debate between two very good friends of mine. I'm not going to name them. If you want to find out, it's, it's go on to Facebook. Uh, and, and, and go on to uh, uh, the, the social media. And you can see the, uh, uh, the, the row. About five or six people joined in. And it was a very event sensible. Yes, people were pissed off. I pissed everybody off. But what I did was I started a debate. And the sort of debate which I wish could seek through to Westminster and, and seek through to our local councils and seek through to our leadership, which is as poor as I can remember it. And on top of which is talking about the BBC is it does some good things and it does some bad things. But this morning I watched uh, uh, the, one of the, the anchors interview a minister uh, uh, and it was the most appalling interview that I've ever seen. And at the end, she must have thought so too, because all she could do is giggle. Uh, uh, now, that's the sort of thing that pisses me off. And I hope that me pointing it out and you it, people who have seen it and think, oh, she did a marvellous job, is I hope it pisses you off too. Because it's time that we started to get angry. It's time that we started to get angry about some of the nonsense that is pushed our way. And not least of which is, is a lady MP who says that uh, she was sacked because she was a Muslim. Well, maybe that was true, but it would be a one-off. I do not know of anybody in my stratosphere who is anti-Muslim. And actually, I wouldn't know who was Muslim and who wasn't. I don't bother to ask. I rate people on a, a, a whole host of criteria, uh, none of which is an ism. I don't care what color, what religion, what background, <laughs> anything about them at all. I, I, I just base them on whether they're somebody that I enjoy. And if I may say so, is there's a lot of uh, uh, opprobrium. Uh, uh, is that the right word? I, I, that's a word that I always have difficulty with. So uh, please uh, um, accept what I mean. Uh, uh, is I, I, I take a lot of stick um, quite often for uh, defending what seems to be the indefensible. And uh, one of the people that I had lunch with yesterday uh, was uh, um, Stanley Johnson, the father of the prime minister. Uh, who, who takes stick for all sorts of things, including his son and some of his own beliefs and so on and so forth. What a charming man. Articulate, well-traveled, uh, uh, has spoken to many world leaders and so on and so forth and arrives at his conclusions uh, from a sensible point of view. Uh, does that ease the, the, the pain of uh, righteous uh, middle-class people? Not in the least. We've got to have a go at him. You know, that's the good liberal thing to do. And I mean liberal with a little L. I'm not talking party politics here. Actually, liberalism and liberalism, far, far removed. Anyway, I want to get you angry first thing in the morning as I'm starting to get angry. And not least of which is the apparent ignorance of everybody about what's happening in uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine. Because the, the reports coming out of uh, uh, the e western part of Russia and the eastern part of Ukraine is that there is mass troop movement. Uh, the Ukraine government is saying that war is most likely. And we have said that we'll get involved. Does nobody care? We're so much up our backsides about uh, whether in fact we've got the highway code right. Okay, not unimportant, I grant you. But nonetheless, is we, we should give equal measure to things. And we don't. We We Parties in, in, in I'm, I'm getting sick and tired of parties in Westminster or parties anywhere else. And I, I put up a little thing this morning, which is a, a, a mock news. Of course, it's not true. But I said that every MP and every civil servants have all got to swear on oath what they were doing at the time of those parties. And for that matter, during the lockdown period, did they go to anything they shouldn't? <laughs> 
well, first of all, you, you would never get them to agree to such a survey or to swear on oath to such things. Uh, and, and, and secondly, you soon find that those who are the most righteous and, and uh, hammering away. Yes, it, it was an awful thing for number 10 to do, to hold parties and sneer at the rest of us while we were facing the walls. But sod it, you know, that, that's over now. I've done it and I'm proud that I lived through it. I'm not so proud of the way that we've been treated, particularly as a small business. That's something else, but I'll fight that fight along with others. It is, it's a fight worthy of fighting. Uh, and so are many others. But for God's sake, can we stop being so self-righteous? And, and can we stop being so parochial? You know, it, it's all very well to say, are you Muslim or are you any other religion for that matter? It is, but if we are not aware of what's going on in the rest of the world, how can we put that into context? That is bigotry. That is nonsense. And by the same token, I must say that just because somebody says that they've been a victim doesn't mean to say uh, that they they were. And for many years, I've said I was a victim in, in, in Canada. I, I was denied work because of the way I sounded. I sounded English, right? Did the Canadians worry about it? Not a bit of it. <laughs> it's bugger off, Keith. That's what I did eventually. <laughs> uh, but, you, you know, it's everywhere. And, and we fight it by being decent, hardworking, honest people. And talking about it instead of, of, of gloating from the sidelines and pointing the finger. You know, you can't get anybody. Well, that's not true. Many people will not enter into honest debate anymore. They won't. It, it, it's all a bit distasteful, my dear. Don't talk about things like that. Well, it's about time that we started talking and started, uh, 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 you, you know, it, honest, intelligent people are getting more and more worried and more and more pissed off at social media where anybody can say anything without any background at all. And uh, uh, anybody who watched my interview with uh, uh, Sir David Oman, uh, uh, who is the, um, actually it's Holland, <laughs> he said from the Shetlands, uh, um, and, and him pointing out, uh, uh, you know, what they look for in a spy, uh, uh, and that is somebody who can be uh, illogical and not let emotion take over in, in a debate, is it, uh, it, it's 90% emotion, and just about everybody accepts that, and yet we allow ourselves to be abused or to abuse or whatever on social media, Right. Yeah. Well, it's about time that as a race or as a nation anyway, we started to wise up to our own faults before we start to point the finger. That's a good morning rant, isn't it? Now let's look at the headlines, uh, because uh, um, what's going on isn't uh, terribly edifying. Um, the, the Daily Telegraph uh, is saying uh, number 10 police question uh, by Gray over parties. Well, this lady who is... Uh, the, the, trying to be as uh, independent as possible in looking at what went on is uh, is talking to everybody to see what went on. The thing is that all sorts of evidence will be collected. What are the conclusions? That two years ago, uh, you know, it, it is what really upsets me is when we haul people into court uh, for something that they did 15 years ago, which might have been totally acceptable at the time. I mean, that, that's that's the wokes who pull down statues and expect everybody to live by the standards that they have today. And those standards are pretty, pretty suspect anyway. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm having a good, a good Monday morning. Yeah, but I am. I'm, I'm angry. I'm angry at, at me for going along with a lot of this stuff. I'm angry with some of my friends who are giving way to it. But generally, I'm angry at what I would call broadly the English. Once a fair and just nation. No, it wasn't. It never has been. But at least it, it recognised some of its sins. Nowadays, we are so self-righteous, we don't recognise anything. All right, oh, OK, let's, let's get on with this. Uh, uh, the, the I, the week of reckoning for Boris Johnson. Well, I suppose it is. Uh, politically, it is. But I wonder whether, in fact, the, our, our sense of justice and decency has been lost in this whole thing. Because we're so offended that somebody was having a gin and tonic when we were being told to, to look at the wall. Happens all the time. Happens in all, all, almost every country. The only one goes navel gazing is us. The Daily Express. 
Boris accepts need for change at number 10. Well, in fairness, Boris said before the last election that there is a, a need for change all the way through governance. He's done nothing about it. And uh, to some extent, I have a sympathy because he was faced with uh, Brexit and then COVID uh, uh, and, uh, and then trade wars uh, uh, and you name it. Uh, a whole host of things that, that he's had to, to look at were forced on him rather than him selecting. But anyway, he accepts the need for change at number 10. Yes, there should be a change in governance all the way through. But not just at number 10, but at Southover. And on the... the, the, the top of, of uh, School Hill there, there should, and, and, and down on well just behind me wherever it is down on the uh, uh, Western uh, uh, Lewis where there's that monstrosity of a county hall is we need to look at all of it not just pick out bits here and pick out bits there never did anybody any good right the Guardian the PM pulled into row over Tory party Islamophobia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you, you do not rub prejudice out overnight. What you do is you practice non-prejudice. I have a prejudice bone in my body. And I'm sorry, uh, people will say, oh, don't be so damn silly. Kid. Well, of course I do. I have prejudice from the fact that I lived uh, through the 1950s and the 1960s and the 1970s and the 1980s when life was very, very different to the way it is today. And those prejudices stay with me. But they are not born of ill will. And I find that there is far more prejudice about those who ponce around at the moment saying that we shouldn't have prejudice uh, than, than some of us who are uh, in our 70s and 80s uh, and, and who have to rid ourselves of some prejudices uh, because we were brought up with them. Entire cabinet would back a tax hike delay. Or who's saying that? Oh, the Daily Mail. Uh, yeah, well, of course, uh, the, the, the cost of living is, is soaring through the roof. Um, I, uh, the, the other day, in fact, I think it was uh, when I, I, I popped up over the weekend, which I don't very often do, is 8% to 10% on uh, 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 roast beef and roast lamb and potatoes going through the roof and <laughs> used cars of all things <laughs> and furniture. Uh, uh, all, all sorts of things. Uh, uh, the cost of living is is, is rising. Uh, so it, it is costing us more. And what the cabinet is saying is, look, Boris, we said we were going to raise taxes to help pay for COVID. Uh, and what we were going to do is we were going to hike uh, the national insurance uh, fee. I think that that's, that's, that's the, the tax that's gone up. And probably uh, all sorts of duty will be put on to, to help pay for it. But, you know, it, once again, were we daft enough as a nation to go through two years of uh, a furlough being supported? <laughs> I may say that I didn't get much support, uh, but being supported, did we? Uh, uh, from uh, the, the, the furlough cost, thinking that it wasn't going to have to be paid for at some stage. Yes, there was a lot of talk at the time. It's our children's children. No, we're going to have to pay for it. No, there are bills that come in on a day-to-day -day basis into our households, and it's the same with government. There are bills, and particularly interest rates, on the huge amounts that they borrow. <laughs> they're going to have to borrow some more, or they're going to have to raise taxes. What do we want? Now, here's, the, here's a real story, though. The Times. Fears mount. Russia will weaponize gas supplies. Uh, in other words, we are dependent upon the supplies of gas uh, via a pipeline across uh, uh, from Russia, and it goes across the Ukraine, uh, 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 some of it anyway. Uh, and uh, that's how we get our energy supplies. Well, that's going through the roof already, partly because of mismanagement here uh, of the uh, energy sector, uh, but also uh, because uh, there is, a, 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 the, well, uh, the, the Russians are able to pay fast and loose. And it was only intervention by the United States with their pals, uh, the Saudis. Oh, how we hate the Saudis uh, because they don't live the way that we do. Uh, but uh, suddenly they've got to be, become uh, great friends because they're the people that more or less dictate the cost of oil and gas. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah, when needs must. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, the Times is saying that Russia will weaponize gas supplies, and I'm not a bit surprised. Uh, 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 is, is invasion nigh? There is a lot of troop movement. A lot of people, I think, have got so soft and sassy, they never lived through a war. They think it won't happen. Well, you know, try reading some of the analysts, uh, the people who uh, um, uh, uh, look at and try to get inside the mind of uh, President Putin. I've lived in, in Russia uh, uh, over a period of about four years. I, I was there for uh, three months at a time. I helped set up one of the uh, major television stations, television network. Uh, so I, I, I can't say that I totally understand them, but I've listened to some of their views. And some of the views of people on, on the, the coal face, the ground floor, are very interesting. And for that matter, I lived also in, in uh, eastern Ukraine, right on the Russian border, well, 12 months from, uh, 12 miles from the Federation in a town called Lugansk. And I saw how people thought there. You want to know how they think? I was given lunch by the major publisher there, publisher of newspaper, magazines, and so on and so forth. And in talking to the lady who was the managing director, uh, we, we, we talked about various newspapers and she said, yes, but the difference between you and us is that all your papers are controlled by the state and we're able to be free. <laughs> Talk about flipping the coin, but that's how they think. And the EU did itself no favors. It roared in with privatization. It privatized without any sort of uh, uh, exit plan, steel and coal, the mines in that part of the country, putting thousands and thousands and thousands of people out of work without anything that could, uh, 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 could, could uh, fill its gap. The press secretary to the governor of that Donbass area, uh, 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 when I spoke to him, was very proud that he was the man who had led the raiding party on, on Lithuania's uh, uh, television uh, station. He was proud of it. He wanted it on his CV, he wanted it known. And that was a, a, a horrific act of trying to silence, uh, at the time of Glasnost, uh, trying to silence uh, the dissidents and to stop some of those states becoming independent. Yeah, those are the people that we're talking about and, and, and dealing with. No matter whether you think that they're right, wrong or indifferent, that's who they are. And who's to, who's to say them they, when you look at the background? But they're the people that will determine what the Russians do in many ways. If you've got the population behind you, you can do almost anything. <laughs> so the population is against you, it becomes very difficult. Anyway, uh, uh, let, let's see, the Metro, a fight to the death. Uh, yes, uh, that, that, that is also uh, about Putin. Uh, the mirror, uh, freezing, uh, the scandal of cold Britain. Well, of course, uh, uh, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people who are, uh, because of everything that's happening around about, are going to, to, to have a, a bad time. Well, yes, there are great weaknesses in our social system, great weaknesses in the way we treat the homeless uh, and the, 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 the mentally ill. And there are great weaknesses in the way that we try to plug the gaps with our medicine and so on. But they are weaknesses and not policy. The policy in Britain to look after the frail, the sick, the elderly are not bad, all in all. And so the application of them, my idiots who only understand filling in a form, if we can reform that, then we won't have people freezing to death. It, 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 it's a certain sector of our society that is going to cause the problems. And will the mirror understand that? No, not a bit of it. Doesn't fit in with its policies. The sun, Katie, is facing five years. Years. The funny thing is that it, it uh, coming coming through the the, the backroom gossip is that uh, either the, the owner or the manager or the editor of the sun was at one of these number ten parties. So it's 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 not giving Boris mad time in case it comes out and uh, starts to besmirch them. Uh, so they, they'll they'll look at anything. So uh, Katie Price is uh, facing five years um, be, because uh, of uh, the the accident that she was in. Uh, oh dear, 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 dear. Uh, the Financial Times uh, goes with uh, um, it, it goes back uh, to uh, some of the 
global economics is that Unilever, a British company, faces pressure uh, on a new front as U.S. activists build a stake. In other words, there are a group of Americans, group of Americans who want to take over Unilever. Um, and actually, the people that do take over British companies in the main is, uh, don't have a very good uh, uh, track record. Once they've got it of keeping it uh, the, the way that it was, they buy it because it's successful. Uh, and then they try to change it into their own mode. Nowhere can I find that uh, 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 more so than with American Express, a, a, a really great company. It was the first credit card company. There was a thing called Diners Club at the time, and it, it put Diners Club out of business uh, in those early days when credit cards were a totally new concept. Now, it's been globalized, and all it does is it uses bullying tactics. If they want to do that in the United States, that's fine, but not here. Thank you. Um, that, right, uh, uh, I've got uh, every, every morning, uh, there is, I look at the comments, uh, and there's always somebody from um, a country that uses Cyrillic, uh, which could be uh, anywhere from Macedonia to, uh, uh, to, to Moscow. Um, and uh, they, they pop up a comment. Uh, and although I can pronounce it, I can't read it. <laughs> uh, so there we are. There we are indeed. Now, uh, um, oh, hang on. I, I, I've got to go to my Daily Star. Hey, Dave, I just saw a spaceship hit, it says. And uh, the, the star has been warning us about extraterrestrials, suggesting that they're out there watching, suggesting that our shenanigans on Earth have meant that we haven't been keeping an eye on the heavens and that uh, uh, the aliens are uh, amassing and ready to do things. But now it's discovered that uh, it is 90 uh, uh, percent, yeah, uh, a quarter, sorry, uh, not as much as 90 percent, a quarter, 25 uh, percent of all sightings of UFOs take place outside a pub. <laughs> so you look to the heavens through a mist of alcohol and what do you see? An alien ship aiming down at us. <laughs> well done, the star. Well done, this daily star. Oh, dearie, dearie, dearie me. Uh, uh, now, uh, I, I've, I've been on uh, that. Uh, uh, watch out for uh, traffic conditions, by the way. Uh, the, the weather is, uh, is, is zero and, and, and six, uh, light cloud, uh, very little chance of rain, and a light breeze. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm, I'm looking at uh, behind me, I'm looking at my uh, trusty trees. As you can see, they are static. So the breeze hasn't started yet. Uh, but there is going to be a light breeze throughout the day. But as long as it's light, it doesn't matter because it can be as cold and uh, the, the breeze doesn't make it any colder. If it's a wind, then it, it, the chill factor adds several degrees uh, to the weather. But we're OK today. Uh, it looks as if it's going to be OK. But do wrap up if and when you go out. Um, the, the also, uh, yes, I, I was saying, uh, 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 do watch out for uh, uh, traffic. A lot of roadworks around, uh, but also because uh, we are now heading back uh, to, uh, with, with the lifting of Plan B, we're heading back to a lots of movement through the ports. It's places like uh, New Haven and Dover and so on are subject to long tailbacks. Uh, and on top of that, uh, we're digging up the roads left, right and centre uh, all over the place in the centre of Lewis, on the road into Brighton, and the road into Eastbourne. Uh, and uh, we, we, we just do that combination is, uh, as somebody called it yesterday, it was a perfect storm. And everything has come together all at once uh, to make sure that we are, are jammed on the roads and can't go anywhere. Uh, so perhaps it's, uh, it's a time to go into the pub and sit there and be grateful that you're close to home. Now, uh, um, I... Uh, I'm going to take a, a strange approach to uh, the, the Russian conflict because uh, uh, some six or seven years ago, perhaps a little, little bit more, uh, the very popular uh, uh, choir program uh, where choirs were put together uh, in various places uh, resulted in a record and uh, one was military wives. And uh, uh, the, the choirs in a camp with the husbands being away 
on military duty overseas uh, were, were fascinating. It was a fascinating story. Now, a, a, a very good friend of ours and a sometimes reporter for this program, Rosie Hayes, uh, runs her uh, own company, which is called um, Your News UK. Y-N-U-K. You want to get little bits and pieces? Dip in. <laughs> Rosie and I both, uh, we, we had a story about cyclists complaining in London. Uh, uh, so they, they, they cycled <laughs> through London naked. <laughs> and the, uh, the Facebook logarithms or algorithms or whatever the hell they call them uh, is uh, uh, classified the, the video obscene. Luckily, YouTube did not, and we were able to, to put it up. And there was nothing obscene about it at all. I mean, it's just amusing. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, Rosie runs uh, uh, that, that news organization, a wonderful job she does. She's a very, very talented journalist. And uh, like uh, those of us who are long in the tooth, and she's not long in the tooth, she's a gorgeous thing. But uh, she's been there and she's done that. She's been around the world. Uh, and we actually did, we worked together in Russia. Uh, but uh, she uh, uh, did a, a little thing on uh, the how the record of, uh, of the movie Military Wives was made. And, uh, and uh, at the time, she sent me uh, this clip. And I thought, yes, OK, if we're facing conflict, why don't we just take a look? So let's take a look together. I'm Kate Barclay, Colonel Barclay's wife. We need to come up with some exciting activities while our service people are away. What about singing? I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I liked the story and um, I related to lots of it, having been an army wife myself. I've never been in a choir and I can't sing. It's a little bit light-hearted in parts, I thought, too light. Uh, my own experience of the army was it was far more rigid than they showed. Although I was impressed by the, the colonel's wife having... I, I was married to a colonel, lieutenant colonel, in the Gurkhas. That's it. There are set rules, and she had a problem that I had. The others are called other ranks. There's a hierarchy in the army, and I thought they addressed it quite well, actually. There is a difficulty there. It's nice to see a film where um, it's, it's not only the central characters are women, but nearly all the char characters are women. Uh, the men hardly get a look in. We know that the director, Peter Castaneo, directed The Full Monty. It is treated very much, I think, as a ultimately a feel-good film with serious bits, like uh, the colonel's lady is grieving the loss of her son. This is about the, uh, the women waiting for their men in the Afghan war. So it was given perhaps a, a, quite a lot, a light touch a lot of the time. I got a little bit tearful about them because I know the hardship that's suffered by everybody when your men go away. I was lucky my husband didn't actually go to war, but I know that I know what it's like being on your own and being a single mother. I think they could have gone a bit deeper with that. There's a certain artificiality about the way that it is structured and told, um, but um, I think quite a lot of people will enjoy it. Particularly, it, it's nice to have a tribute to the military wives, the real military wives, who spend so much time on their own worrying about their husbands and some of them, of course, they lose their husbands. This was a feel-good film. This is about people who found something meaningful to do through an upsetting, difficult time. So it was a small conceit, but I think it, I think it was I think it was worthy. Lying in my bed, I hear the clock tick and think of you. Well, there you are. Uh, Rosie Hayes uh, uh, actually went and did that report, uh, and uh, and she spoke to some of these uh, uh, the people who were involved. Well, more to the military wives rather than the the stars, although it was a combination of uh, actors, actresses, and uh, and real people. And uh, if you haven't seen the culmination of the real thing at the Royal Albert Hall in front of the the, the Queen. As it is quite something. It is very, very, very emotional. Um, worthwhile catching up on. Worthwhile indeed. All right. Uh, uh, let's uh, now. Oh, uh, uh, actually, I had all of a flutter uh, because I saw something fly past the window, and I, I was just looking again at the Daily Star's uh, uh, 
article about uh, we are being looked at from outer space. I thought, God, I, I've I've seen I've seen a, a, an alien craft. I, I rushed, because the video was on. I was able to rush to the window and take a look out. And actually, it wasn't. It was a pig flying by. <laughs> and he, uh, I, I think he was on the way uh, uh, to uh, uh, watching or coming from all the uh, uh, great and the good who are standing accusing uh, people in Westminster of partying. Uh, well, of course, they, they, they were absolutely crystal pure. They never did anything like that. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, it wasn't an alien, it was a pig. <laughs> it's flapping its little wings uh, as it tore across uh, uh, the, the, the sky ahead of me. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Uh, who are we? Where are we? Um, well, first of all, I am a thorn in the flesh of everybody. I, I actually say the most outrageous things in the hope that it'll get you so excited and so upset uh, that you'll start to debate some things because we become a society that acquiesce. We go and we buy our, our goods and we go and shop and we talk about our knitting and, and the prams and uh, perhaps even sometimes bridge. But do we care enough to do anything about our society? No, we do not. Uh, so I hope that I get everybody so riled up that we'll start some sort of conversation. I certainly started it <laughs> a couple of days ago. Mind you, I have to say that the two people that uh, that really got involved are two good friends, and I've had many an argument with both of them, uh, and, and they, they, are, uh, they are people who are interested in our community. Uh, but they are a few, and we need far more people ready to actually, if if not being activists and the trouble with activists is that they they have one single point and so they stick their trousers to a, a, a road somewhere or something and so i mean it's absolute nonsense because debate and argument and ideas and thoughts and how are we going to solve various issues is far more important than actually doing silly things so there <laughs> let's be calm let's be calm and remember where we are huh? Well, uh, uh, yesterday, uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to have uh, lunch. Uh, I, I, I did something that I haven't done for a long time. I acted as cameraman. I'm not a very good cameraman. Uh, I'm not very good uh, as far as technology is concerned at all, but I am able to aim a camera and uh, uh, frame it and push the button, uh, which I did. While Liza Page, uh, a member of the... Uh, Mirador television community uh, interviewed uh, um, Mr. Johnson. Uh, his <laughs> is, uh, uh, is, is Stanley Johnson, uh, um, who, who is, uh, uh, of course, uh, the father of the uh, of the MP. But he was an MEP, well travelled, and so on and so forth. And afterwards, uh, we, we went to, uh, for, for lunch. And he is a very articulate and interesting man. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm privileged to be able to do these things once in a while. So when people start to rant and rave about some individual, as you say, have you met them? Have you listened to them? Have you read anything that they've, they, they, they've, they've done? Uh, no, no, but uh, I, I've got a view. I've got a view, yeah. Well, I, I, I had a thoroughly nice lunch, a very interesting time. And uh, he, he was good enough uh, uh, to, to cancel three, three trains. 
phone his wife and say, I'm sorry, darling, but I'm going to be late home because I'm busy talking to <laughs> some people in Lewis that I am rather enjoying. And uh, Eliza and I sat and, and had a, a very, very uh, nice lunch with him. Uh, and uh, what, what a, an interesting man. And he was part of the Lewis Speakers Festival. Uh, but it, just let me remind you of some of the people that have been here, that are Marina Chapman, and hopefully we're going to have a chat for Marina uh, because uh, when, before the festival, uh, Lewis Speakers Festival, which took place over the last Saturday, this past Saturday and Sunday. Um, it, 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 we we uh, it, it got actually a misunderstanding of when we were going to do it. So we're going to do it sometime this week. And Marina Chapman was raised by uh, monkeys. Um, she was kidnapped as a five-year-old. Uh, 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 it, it's not clear why she was kidnapped because she can't remember who, who she was. Uh, but she was dumped by her kidnappers when they failed to get a ransom in the jungle and left to die. And uh, some uh, capuchin, I think it is, uh, um, yeah, it's capuchin monkeys who uh, uh, tend to rather like uh, humankind. Um, they, they, they found her, uh, accepted her into the group and then eventually made her a member of the family. And she was with them for five years and they looked after her. And at 10, she was found by a, 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 a hunter who then sold her into, uh, into a brothel, uh, uh, who then sold her into um, uh, 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 servitude. She was a, 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 an abused maid before she actually uh, got out and uh, eventually made her way to Bradford, where she now lives, uh, and an interesting lady. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it's almost Tarzan of the Apes. OK, it, it was the, 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 the big ape family that looked after Tarzan. It was a smaller capuchin monkey that looked after Marina, uh, but a fascinating story. And uh, the, uh, the session apparently was packed, and so it should have been. Polly Toynbee was there. Um, uh, we had on Friday, I spent an hour uh, talking to Professor, Professor Sir David Oman, uh, who was the uh, former spy chief, GCHQ. Uh, and how interesting he was in pointing out that we are moving from James Bond to uh, very much uh, uh, the use of uh, cyber uh, uh, defenses uh, uh, to look after our spying activities. Uh, and it's not because we've decided, it's, it's the way of the world. Um, so uh, he, he also had a, a packed house. Uh, Robin Ince, a comedian. Uh, Vince Cable, who many people remember as when the, during the coalition uh, uh, with liberals and uh, conservatives, was the uh, um, uh, the Minister for State for Business. Uh, and uh, uh, Simon Heffer, who uh, is a very well-known journalist uh, and columnist of, uh, of a, a number of uh, national uh, publications. Norman Baker was speaking, uh, and Lord Howell, the former Minister of State for Northern Ireland. Uh, and um, Susan Saunders, a documentary producer. David Walker, the former director of public reporting at the Audit Commission. That one would have been very interesting with the way that finances are going at local and uh, uh, senior level. Uh, so a, a very, very good uh, uh, roundup of speakers. Uh, and uh, the next one is in June. And I was speaking to, uh, uh, to, to Mark, uh, who uh, um, is uh, the organizer. Uh, and he's already busy trying to get a, a, a really good uh, talker's list, speaker's list. Uh, interesting, informative, and you can see them eye to eye. And you have the opportunity of, of asking questions. Uh, the only thing I would say is it's not cheap. Uh, it, it's more than a visit to the cinema, I think. But nonetheless, uh, a, a unique opportunity to speak to famous people uh, and, and listen to them. Uh, first hand when you may never ever uh, have that opportunity uh, uh, elsewhere so that was it uh, the uh, lewis speakers festival ah, where are we now well once again the key thing i think is that uh, um, we have to keep an eye we have to keep an eye because a lot of people are shrugging it off as not being terribly important on uh, the, the the russians uh, uh, amassing their, their troops on the border with Ukraine. And uh, I, uh, well, I, I've worked in Russia and I've worked in Ukraine. And in fact, I worked 
uh, in Ukraine and the very area uh, that the Russian forces are now amassing on the border. Uh, so I know a little bit about that area and the way that people think. And believe me, I, I think that uh, the, the, the crisis is, is much deeper and much greater uh, than uh, anybody is, is really letting on or, or talking about at the moment. Because uh, a, a lot of people in those areas, and for that matter, in a number of the satellite states, is younger people, for instance, in Lithuania uh, 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 and Armenia, uh, uh, are very keen on maintaining their freedoms. But a lot of older people say, no, we were much better off uh, when, when we were under the Russian Federation. Uh, so there's a lot of sympathy for uh, the the, uh, the Russian government, as it was. Uh, so it, it, it's, to me, it's one of the things that we should be watching very, very carefully. And a lot of people are almost saying is, oh, what's, what's the problem? What are you talking about? Well, let's hope. Let's hope. Uh, that uh, President Putin uh, withdraws at the last minute. The big problem is that there is a, a, what I would call a Russian mentality. You see, I said there are no isms in me. So immediately I show some sort of bigotry. Uh, but uh, I, I do understand that there is a, a Russian way of thinking about things. And Margarita Simonian, the editor-in-chief of Russia Today Television, with which I was heavily involved, and I would have a, a, a dinner, a, a traditional dinner before I left Moscow, uh, and we would talk about these things. Uh, and uh, and we, we both accepted that there was a difference of opinion, and we debated it. Uh, but I don't think that on the border with Ukraine uh, is that President Putin is going to uh, mind much uh, about debate. Uh, he, he is ex-KGB. Uh, he has advisors who are in his image, just the same, I may say, as we in this country. Uh, uh, Boris has advisors in his, his image. Uh, uh, the Americans have advisors in their image. And actually, uh, 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 for all the people who are yelling and screaming about Trump, uh, and perhaps rightly so in many instances, is, uh, they're now beginning to find out that Joe Biden uh, was the very thing that they were trying to get rid of by bringing in Trump. Is uh, he's putting his foot in it in foreign policy very badly and almost encouraging uh, the, the Russians to do something. And then again, America is a bit further away from uh, uh, Eastern Ukraine than we are. Uh, so the, the whole thing, as usual, is, uh, is a, a, a bit of a mess. Uh, people aren't quite sure what they should be doing, what position they should be taking, or what the other side is going to do. Mind you, of 1939, well, 38, uh, it reminds you of 1914, 15 in Russia, uh, and uh, for that matter, in, in a lot of other places in between, which didn't have quite the input of major powers uh, that those two instances did. All right, I'm, uh, I'm philosophizing now, I'm probably not making a hell of a lot of sense. After all, it is Monday morning, it's 8.44. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm actually going to uh, say Toodle Pip in a minute. Uh, what, what should you watch out for this week? Well, uh, the, there is, uh, in, in Hastings, uh, there is a professional theatre production of Macbeth uh, taking place. And our lady, uh, uh, Jane Watkins, has been heavily involved with it. So she's going to come on tomorrow morning uh, and, uh, and chat to us uh, along with... Uh, Fergus Wood, who will uh, be talking about wine as usual uh, and uh, uh, giving a view on, uh, on what's happening in the world. But Jane will be along to give us a, a, some background into what happens uh, in, in, when, when you're involved behind the scenes, as it were, in theatre. At one time, I suppose we all thought that we knew. Nowadays, uh, because of electronics and so on and so forth, it is all once again a mystery. So Jane is going to fill us in uh, with, with that. And hopefully we will have Marina Chapman on later in, in, in the week uh, to tell us uh, what it is like. Fancy waking up at, at five years of age to find that you're in the jungle. You can't find your way out. Uh, that you've got all sorts of, uh, of nasty things, uh, uh, both uh, uh, animals, uh, uh, plants, bugs, snakes, uh, all uh, uh, looking to make you a meal. And, and there you are at five years of age. Uh, not knowing what to do. It must have been horrific. And along come 
a, a group of monkeys and, uh, and 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 look after her for five years uh, before she is found. Interesting stuff. And I'm quite sure that as the week goes on, uh, we'll find even more interesting stuff. Uh, two things. First of all, I am first thing in the morning going to do a short, I'm going to look at the news and I'm going to find something that really is pissing me off. And then I'm going to try and piss you off so that we can start the day yelling and screaming at one another. You say, oh, well, who wants to start the day like that? Well, I think that we all should, because that's the time when we're ready to dig our heels in, get to grips with reality and start to think about what's happening in our community. Not thinking about it late at night or, uh, or when we get home and all we feel like is a gin and tonic and sinking back and, and, and being looked after uh, while we watch uh, some sort of damn silly movie. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, we shall uh, have uh, uh, spot news, as it were. It may be that days will go by when we don't come on the air. But uh, one of the things that has impressed me about the small scale television stations in the States, and that is uh, that they just pop on the air. And in a very leisurely and relaxed way, they say, oh, this is, this is what's coming up. This is what's happening and so on. Uh, so we're not going to do it to bore you to death. But if something is happening and uh, it, it is, we're not talking about being first with the news, that's all rubbish. Uh, but uh, quite often news can happen and people don't find out because uh, they're not watching the particular station or outlet or news operation uh, that breaks the news in the first place. It's all great in the inside is we were first with the news. What difference does that make? As long as you actually uh, make sure that people are aware of the news. So if we see something that's relatively important, uh, we, we will pop up uh, and we'll just give you a very a quick rundown of what's happening uh, uh, so that you can make up your own mind about how you feel about it. So those are some of the things that you can expect over the, uh, the next little while. Uh, once again, the uh, two main stories, of course, is, uh, uh, is, is what's going to happen to Boris. Uh, and and I, th I think actually uh, people are beginning to realize that, um, yes, it's all very well to go after uh, the master craftsman, as it were. Uh, uh, but wh what are we going to put in its place? Now, to me, there is nothing worthwhile. I'm not, I'm not defending Boris I'm, uh, any more than I defend Biden. But I wouldn't want to see Biden replaced in the United States either at this particular stage. There are too many things going on in the world which need at least unbroken leadership, even if the leadership is a bit thin. Uh, so uh, while uh, so many people are gloating about what will happen and what might happen and, and let's take our vengeance on Boris and let's uh, take our vengeance on Joe, is, is it in our best interest? I don't know. I'm not telling you one way or the other, but I'm asking you to think about it uh, instead of just being moral and, and poncing around and saying, eh, they shouldn't have done that, they shouldn't have done that, they shouldn't. Uh, but the consequence of, of actually gloating and saying, oh, there, we brought him down, we brought the prime minister down, is is that actually going to do us any good? In fact, may it do us more harm than we think. Just think about it. Just think about it and stop being so bloody moral and up your own backsides about what you think and so on. There are too many people, and you can hear it on television, and you can hear it uh, in, in social media and so on. So many people who are so absolutely sure that what they're telling us is fact. I don't. It's debatable. And that's what you've got to accept. And that is where you need to tone down some of your rubbish so that we can actually make up our own minds and not be bullied into a, a position. Did that make sense? Probably not. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's just coming up to 10 to 9. And I'm now going to, uh, to say toodle pip. Uh, oh, oh, hang on. We, 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 somebody is, is a comment. Um, Steel O'Connell, uh, uh, ha have no idea where Steel comes from, and and Tatiana, uh, a, a Caesar, uh, or uh, Caesar. Uh, uh, it's in Cyrillic, and uh, my Cyrillic is, isn't that good at this hour of the morning. Uh, but anyway, uh, 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 there's, there's some people who have, uh, have have tried to make a comment. Good for them. Eight fifty. Be back tomorrow morning, but keep an eye open during the day. If you uh, subscribe to us, your phone or whatever uh, will ping saying that we're live. Uh, and uh, if you don't get that, 
try and uh, try and, and actually uh, tap in to to us uh, miradortelevision.com or mirador television lewis uh, on facebook uh, and mirador television on youtube uh, and you'll find out uh, what we've been doing uh, in the, the latest uh, uh, state of the art uh, state of the situation state of the country state of the world even the state of the garden next door talk to you tomorrow or later today depending toodles uh, I, I think yes toodles no i'm i'm kate barkley colonel barkley's wife we need to come up with some exciting let's uh, uh let, let's go out oh let's go out gently shall we yeah Thank you.